It's time to take cover, people, and save yourselves with Great Value Home Cover from Super Value Insurance. You'll get a 15% online discount and shopping vouchers with every policy. That's a great deal for the cover you need anyway. All it takes is one big click or call. Just visit supervalue.ie slash insurance or call 0818 0101101 and our team will save the day without the drama. Terms and conditions apply. Vouchers include two 10 euro or 40 euro spend. Home contents only policies excluded. This home insurance is underwritten by AXA Insurance DAC. Super Value Financial Services DAC trading in Super Value Insurance is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Doing well in your career but looking to do better? At DBS we want you to get to where you want to go with part-time postgraduate, evening degrees and professional diploma courses taught by people as successful at what they do as they are at teaching it. Kickstart your career with real-world learning. Apply today at dbs.ie. Fibber McGee and Molly are back. They're back again, Fibber and Molly. Fibber McGee and Molly are back. Yes, but they're leaving again, or at least she is. I saw her packing her suitcase this morning. Somebody going away, sis? Who's leaving? Mrs. Molly McGee. I hear she's going out of town today. Oh, well, it does a woman good to get away from her husband once in a while. Molly McGee! Hey, that's my wife. Her husband is me. Oh, my gosh, I gotta get home. My wife is me. Yep, it's the Pet Milk Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The first evaporated milk, Pet Milk, presents Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick Legrand, Cliff Arquette, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Keith Fowler and directed by Max Hutto with music by the Kingsmen and Billy Mills Orchestra. Well, it's great to be back selling pet milk again. And in case some of you haven't heard the good news, now with every tall can of pet evaporated milk, you get a famous Mary Lee Taylor recipe right on the label. A husband-tested recipe, which means you can use it and be mighty sure of pleasing the men folks in the family. Because the recipe's been tried in homes like yours and given a big okay by the husbands. Of course, when you use pet milk, it's easy to fix the kind of food your family likes best because pet milk is good, sweet country milk that's double rich. Concentrated to double richness by evaporation. And believe you me, that double richness adds extra goodness to everyday foods. Extra wholesomeness, too. And at such low cost, because pet milk still costs less generally than ordinary bottled milk or any other form of milk. So get several tall cans of pet milk at your grocer's tomorrow. Remember, there's a husband-tested recipe right on the label. And here goes a worried husband up the front steps now at 79 Wispo Vista, the home of Fibber McGee and Molly. Molly, where are you? Take it hey. easy, dearie. I'm right here packing my suitcase. <laughs> I tried to phone you downtown. Well, don't go, I... kiddo. Please, don't go. Don't go? Why, you haven't... Oh, I'll straighten up, Molly. Honest, I will. Oh, McGee, you're all... I won't stay down at the Elks Club shooting pool all morning when I should have been home helping you dry the breakfast dishes like I promised I would last night when I skipped taking out the garbage to go bowling anymore. I'll stay home. <laughs> but, McGee, I'm Look, going... Look, I'll pick up my wet towels off the floor when I take a shower. I'll stop putting cigar butts in the potted fern, even. Well, I'll even quit snoring so loud at night, even. Well, now, that's the best offer I've had so far. <laughs> Gee whiz, I, I couldn't live with you gone, Molly. Oh. Why, I, I'd starve to death. I'll get sick. You want me to come down with something? Yes, I do. Oh? I want you to come down to the Union Station with your suitcase. We are going to Omaha. <laughs> Omaha? We? You mean... Uh, yes. Uh, here, read this telegram. Oh. It came right after you left. Telegram? What's wrong? Somebody sick? Don't tell me Uncle Dennis needs bail money again because of that. <laughs> now, will you read it? Oh. Mrs. Molly McGee, chairman of the Wispel Vista Community Chess. That is your wife. <laughs> Due to your wonderful record as community chess chairman of Wispel Vista... The citizens of Omaha urgently request your presence to assist us in organizing our campaign. Yes. Yeah. Gee whiz. You. Isn't that exciting? I wired them we'd be there. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, Omaha. 
What a town. Ever been there? Nope. Now, wait to hear the rest of it. Yeah? Mayor Latrivia phoned a while ago, and he's going with us. Oh, Latrivia, huh? And he's paying all our expenses. Oh, well, if he's paying all the bills, we'll take him along. He can go. A very generous attitude. But, hey, we can't stand here, Gavin. We've got a lot of things. Come in. Oh, here's Mayor Latrivia now, McGee. Come in, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Molly. Well, my gosh, my favorite mayor. Come in, Latrivia, old man. I'm glad to see you, old sock old boy. I missed you all summer, haven't I, Molly? You, uh, you told him, I see, Molly. <laughs> yes, Mr. Mayor, I She told sure him. did, boy, and I think it'll be a great trip. We'll have a lot of fun in Omaha, the four of us. Four of us? Yes. I and Molly and you and the city checkbook. <laughs> the city has nothing to do with it. This trip is at my own personal expense. Understand that, please. Oh, sure, sure. We understand that, boy. <laughs> Your door, city door, it all comes out the same pockets. <laughs> Who's theory? The taxpayers. It ain't our problem. If the city treasurer can balance his books... Let's keep my brother-in-law out of this... <laughs> okay, boy. Now, how do you want to arrange... It? Come in. Oh, hello, Mr. Oldtimer. Hello there, kids. Hi, Johnny. Hi, daughter. Hi. Timer? I ain't seen you kids all summer, kids. Well, you better take a fast look, boy. We're leaving again. Latrivia's taking us to Omaha. Omaha, eh? Yep. Great town, Omaha. Never been there myself, but my girlfriend, Bessie, was raised in Atlanta. Raised in Atlanta? Georgia? No, Bessie. Georgia was raised up north near Des Moines. <laughs> Highway? Yep. Highway 66, just outside Little Rock. Little Rock is in Arkansas. Thought you were going to Nebraska. We are. Well, you'll never get there by way of Little Rock, daughter. If I was you kids, I'd go look, by look, way look, of... Just, 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 just a minute, please. We are not going through Little Rock, old timer. Well, you're the one that brought it up, Mayor. You drug it in the conversation first. No, 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 I didn't. Didn't he, I... Johnny? Didn't he, didn't he, didn't he? Why, sure he didn't he. Sure. <laughs> I said Bessie was raised in Atlanta, and daughter here says she's going to Omaha, and you piped up, Mayor, and says Little Rock is in Arkansas. Yes, I know, but I was... Let's get the facts straight here. Now, where are you going, daughter? Omaha. Where are you going, Johnny? Omaha. And where are you going, Mayor? Home. <laughs> See you at the station, Molly. Hey. Hey, why don't you come to Omaha with us, old-timer? It's free. Well, Johnny, that's right neighborly of you. I, uh... Now, McGee, I don't think Mayor Latrivia expected anybody else to go. Ah, uh, thump. It's only money. Taxpayers' money. You'll enjoy watching us handle a big deal back there, old-timer, with Molly charming the people and me standing quietly in the background pulling the strings for the whole thing. Say, Papa used to do that years ago, kids. Very successful, too. Your father, huh? Yep. Papa was quite a power in our town, daughter. Do tell. For 20 years, he just stood quietly in the background and pulled the strings. Politician, was he? Nope. Papa was a corset salesman. <laughs> Billy Mills, the orchestra, and love is the reason.
everything from Kramer's drugstore. Phone Doc Gamble invited him to Omaha with us. Now, McGee, I don't think you should keep inviting people on this trip. Mayor Latrivia. Uh, oh, hi, Mort. Mort Tooth? Yeah. Hey, Mort, you want to go to Omaha with me? It's free. He answer you? Shook his head. Twice. Well, come on, i got to stop in the Elks Club here and pick up my pool cue from Ole. Yes, by all means do that. We don't want to forget your pool cue. Should be a handy thing to pack, too, dearie. Oh, hello there, Ole. Oh, hi, Ole. Well, hello, missus. Hi, McGee. This is quite a surprise. We don't yes. see you here at Elks Club all summer. Yeah? Some of the boys was just saying they don't see little laughing face lately. <laughs> Is that what they call him here, Ole, laughing face? Mm, well, shucklehead, to be exact. <laughs> Same thing. Well, I ain't staying but a minute, Ole. I just stopped by to pick up my pool cue. I and Molly are invited to Omaha. You took in your pool cue to Omaha? Yep. What you gonna do, try to shoot your way out from behind the eight ball? <laughs> well, he's taking his pool cue and his tuxedo, Ole. That's in case we get invited to a formal dinner on a billiard table. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe a grand ball at the pool hall. <laughs> well, I like to be prepared. This is... Hey, why don't you come with us, Ole? Cost you nothing. Mayor Latrivia's picking up the tab. Oh, dear. Well, thanks, McGee. That's very kind. But I, I couldn't leave my missus and kids that long. I, I get lonesome. Well, bring the wife... Oh, no, no, McGee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'd love to have you, Ole. You're mighty fond of your family, aren't you, Ole? Oh, sure, missus. They're a fine bunch of kids. I go home from work tired last night, and when I walk up to the door of my little house, thinking about the kids, I, I kind of choke up. You choke up just thinking about them? No, little Sven, he drops cowboy rope around my neck and runs with it. <laughs> he thanks his jump along Cassidy, Sven does. Heavenly <laughs> day. But little Ole, he's the one. Uh -oh. He comes and he brings my bedroom slippers, and then I put them on, he stood there and laughs. Yeah, why does he laugh? He fills the toes full of carpet tacks. <laughs> <laughs> but finally, I sit down to read the paper, and then the missus, she calls Ole. Oh, I'll bet she wants you to come and give her a kiss, huh? No, she says her brother come by for dinner again, and I got to entertain that clobber head while he drinks all my elderberry wine. I what time you leave for Omaha, McGee? I meet you at the station. <laughs> Four o'clock, Ollie. And bring my cool pew. Or oh, oh, pool pew. Oh, come on, Molly. Well, now, this is going to be quite a junket, I think. This ought to teach the mayor to... Oh, look who's coming, McGee. Mr. Wimple. Yeah. Oh, hi, Wimp. Hello, folks. <laughs> seen you all summer, Mr. Wimple. Have a nice vacation? Oh, just dandy, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> I had two wonderful weeks. Yeah? Where'd you go? I didn't go anywhere, Mr. McGee. She went. <laughs> she? You mean... Yes. Sweetie face, my big old wife. <laughs> ah, life can be beautiful when it wants to. Yes, but I bet after a couple of weeks without her, you were glad to see her back at that. Oh, yes. I really was glad to have her home, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> I got pretty tired sitting in that locked fruit cellar. <laughs> well, we're just getting ready to take a little trip ourselves, Wimp. Hey, we go Molly, pal. Well, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. Hey, I hear you kids are going to Omaha. Hello, Hilo. Oh, hello, Molly. <laughs> Hey, uh, that's my hometown, you know, Omaha. Say, I'd forgotten that, Mr. Wilcox. I'll bet it has a lot of happy memories for you, hasn't it? Ah, it certainly has, Molly. It was in Omaha that I met my first love. Oh, oh my. Romance. Tell us about it, Mr. Wilcox. I met mine at a wrestling match. <laughs> Somebody threw her in my lap. <laughs> Come on, Junior. Let's hear your big true confession story. Well, I was only three days old at the time. Three days? Yes. My mother introduced me to pet evaporated milk. My first real love. Oh, this is going to be another sneaky season. <laughs> uh, circumstances kept us apart for a while. <laughs> that didn't happen to me. 
<laughs> but we finally found each other. Isn't that romantic? Hey, and speaking of pet milk, kids, have you heard what Pet is doing now? No. Printing those terrific Mary Lee Taylor recipes right on the label. That's a wonderful idea. Yes, sir. Every tall cat of pet milk has a swell recipe for one of pet good, rich dishes printed right on the label. Housewives are crazy about the idea because it makes it so easy for them to feed their families nourishing and pleasing dishes. Every recipe is a husband-tested recipe, too. I'm a recipe-tested husband myself, Junior. <laughs> Molly tries everything. And, and of course, uh, you're always ahead when you cook your favorite family dishes with pet because pet milk is just good, sweet country milk evaporated to double richness. Now, hey, and hey, beyond hey, that, hey, it's... hey, hey, uh... Milky. Yes, pal. <laughs> Why don't you come along, along to Omaha with us and tell us the rest of this fascinating story on the way, 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 way? <laughs> now I'd be happy, happy, happy to. Uh, you might as well come too, Mr. Wimple. Me? Oh, gracious, I'd love to, but... Well, won't cost you a cent, fellas. Latrivia's treat, you know. Could, uh, could... Sweetie face, come to. Oh, no, I'm afraid not, Wimp. I'm sorry. It's a deal. <laughs> I made it to the station. Four o'clock. Come on, Molly. I've got to get my tux into this tailor shop here. I hope I can get a quick job here on this tux. Oh, hi, bud. How do you do, sir? And I presume, madam. What can I do for you? Well, I got a job here for you, bud. You the head alteration man? Yes, I am. Fine. And frankly, sir, your head could stand some alteration. Ah, <laughs> oh, with a new pair of ears and a few tucks and that loose skin on the back of your neck, I do... No, no, that isn't what he means, Mr. Uh... Yeah, right, madam. Uh, Rodney J. Wright, uh, Master Taylor. <laughs> well, look, Master, I got a tux here that needs fixing. We're going to Omaha this afternoon at 4 o'clock, so make it snappy. We're Russian. Russian, eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that puss, I'd swear you were Irish. <laughs> that just goes to show oh, you said. Well, listen now, we are Irish, sir. He simply means we're in a hurry. Yeah. We want to make a train. Well, I'll be happy to make it for you, madam. Huh? <laughs> I made a train last week for the Oglesby Dufendorf wedding <laughs> that was nine feet long with pink satin ruching and yellow bows. No, no, no. That ain't the kind of a train we're talking about. We gotta catch a train before it pulls out at the Union Station. Oh, well, the same thing happened at the Oglesby Dufendorf wedding. <laughs> Bride caught the train in her heel and her shoe, and it pulled out at the hip. <laughs> Very affairs of situation because I was sick. Oh, now, for goodness sake. <laughs> Let's get down to business here. Yeah, pipe down, will you, bud? I'll step in the booth here and put this tuxedo on so you can see what it means. Yes, yes, you do that. Look, baby, while old dad is slipping out of his pants, <laughs> let you and I slip out to the ice cream parlor. What? I'll buy you a double Arabian night Sunday with two spoons. Hey, skip it. Here he comes. <laughs> well, how's it look? A little tight, I'm afraid. How's it fit in the back, Molly? Like the skin on a weenie. <laughs> once before, bud, but maybe they didn't let Oh, it. I doubt that, sir. No respectable tailor would ever let that suit out. Oh. It must have escaped. <laughs> that is a vintage garment if I ever saw one. <laughs> well, never mind admiring it, bud. Let's get it fixed to fit. <laughs> well, let me see. Well, there's nothing wrong with that tuxedo that a can of gasoline and a match won't fix. <laughs> what? Let's face it, Dad. With these duds, you're dead. <laughs> Now, please, Mr. Wright, stop knocking the tuxedo. Yeah. Uh, what are you trying to do? Seamus? <laughs> Seamus, the pretty Colleen is talking to me. Well, faith and because Dad ratted on my name. <laughs> it's McGee. Right. Yes, baby? I wasn't addressing you. No, she simply said I'm right. No, no, I'm right. You're confused. No, he's McGee. I am not. You are, too. He is not. I... Oh, oh, look, I... McGee, I... why don't you wrestle him for it? I'll run home and get the baggage. Meet me at the station. The King's Men and the Wondrous Word of the Lord. Lord, 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 oh, heaven. The Lord has taken your measurement, and if you stand up tall, oh, no. then you will all be eligible to sit in the heavenly hall. And you listen to the music and the beautiful singing, and you listen to the music and the beautiful singing. 
to listen to the wondrous word of the Lord, Lord, Lord. The wondrous word of the Lord, God, he's watching over everyone, every night and day. So heed the wisdom of his word, and never forget to pray, and listen to the music by the heavenly choir. Listen to the wondrous word of the Lord, oh Lord, oh the wondrous word of the Lord. Now, brethren and sisters of the congregation, are you ready and able for the celebration? Better listen to the words that he's going to say. You better get ready for the judgment day. Oh, you must be ready for his call, no matter where you roam. Oh, Lord. So walk that straight and narrow path, and it will lead you home. And you listen to the music and the beautiful singing. And you listen to the wondrous words of the Lord. Lord, Lord, oh, listen, hear the wondrous word of the Lord. Oh, listen to the man come upon. close to me. Don't go wandering all over the depot. Remember, the train leaves at 6 o'clock sharp and the gate opens at 5.45. What time is it, Molly? 5.27, dearie. Yeah. Just 15 seconds later than it was when you asked me 15 seconds ago. <laughs> I did? Well, that's on account of a guy that he's an experienced traveler like I happen to be one of them is always on my toes. You've been on our toes since 4 o'clock when you dragged everybody down here. And may I make a suggestion? What is it? I still think you ought to go take off that tuxedo. What? And stand here in my underwear? <laughs> Why, my God! No, gosh. no, where's the suit you wore into the tailor shop? I had him mail that to Omaha. There was no time for me to make the... Hey, I better check the list, make sure everybody's here. No, McGee, not again. Well, I can't start slipping up now. Okay, you guys, sound off when you hear a name call. Hot water bottle. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Wrong list. That's the stuff we bought at Kramer's Drugstore. Here, I got the right list. Molly McGee! I'm all here, lover. Except one ear that you just blasted off. <laughs> Stand back and don't breathe down my list. <laughs> Arlo Wilcox. Here, pal. Old timer. Hi, right here, Tony. Holy Swenson. You won't look at me square in the eyeballs, McGee. <laughs> just say here now without no back talk, boy. Wallace Wimple. Wallace Wimple reporting to duty, sir. <laughs> it ain't necessary to salute me, Wimp. Just stay where just stay where I can see you. What's the idea of hiding behind that baggage truck? What do you think? Sweetie Face finds out I'm sneaking out of town, she'll hit the ceiling with me. <laughs> well, you stay close. Mayor Latrivia. Latrivia. Ain't that widow and orphan Robin stuffed shirt showed up yet? Don't get excited, dearie. The mayor will be here in time. Oh, I ain't excited. What time is it, Molly? 5.31. Now, take it easy, kiddo. Don't lose your head. Sounds to me like it's your head that's coming loose, Johnny. <laughs> oh, no, not me. <laughs> No, sir, not me. I'm cute as a cool cumber. Or cum as a cool cooper. Uh, well, what time is it? 5.31 and three quarters. Well, if the trivia don't get here pretty soon... Well, the... keep a step up a short on, McGee. Here comes the mayor now. It's about time. 5.32. I didn't ask you what time it was. Just plain and safe, lover. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hello, Molly. McGee. Well, quite a group of friends here to see us off. <laughs> Ain't seeing us off. I invited McGee, all... McGee, McGee. What in the world are you wearing? Oh, that's my tux, Latriv. Figured I'd give the social whirl a whirl in Omaha. How do I look? Like a penguin at the end of molting season. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got no time to fiddle-faddle with you now. Hustle over and get the tickets, Latriv. Well, there's, there's no rush. I called and told them to hold tickets for the three of us. We have news for you, Mr. Mayor. There's eight of us. These people are all gone, too. I invited all of them to trivia. You didn't. <laughs> Don't worry, I told everybody it was your treat. You said you'd pay for the party, so I thought we'd make it a real party. That makes you a big McGee, man. McGee, this is preposterous. What? I can't afford to take half a wistful vista to all my heart, my expense. Oh, stop trying, Latriv. Everybody knows you're loaded, even if Mort Toops does say you ain't got any money at all. He says that? Yes, he says you're the poorest mayor we ever had. <laughs> 
That's neither here nor there. I'm sorry to disappoint these worthy people, but you had no Hello, right to... Which... You'd like to keep on being mayor, wouldn't you, boy? And it's almost election time. 535. Thanks, kiddo. <laughs> These guys control a lot of votes, Latrib, and if they spread the word around that you welched out on an invitation, weaseled out on your sacred obligation to the voters... No! Stop it! <laughs> this is an outrage. But I'm telling I'll not be coerced by this threat. I should... I'll resist it vigorously. No, sir. I'll not let the loss of a few votes... I'll... 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 Buy the tickets. <laughs> Eight people. Omaha. Eight times. Oh. Bring me back a bottle of orange pop, Latriv. Uh, no, make it lime. 536. I said lime. Natural mistake. Yeah. Well, I got everything under control at last, kiddo. Latrivia's buying the tickets. Everybody's here where I can watch them. Except Dr. Gamble. Oh, Dr. Gamble. Where is that big fat? Did I hear my name mentioned, Marble Top? It's... Oh, there you are. Looking like butter wouldn't melt in your mouth, which, judging from your weight, I know plenty of it has. <laughs> Stick close to me, because... What are you staring at? What is that thing you're wearing? That's his tuxedo, Doctor. Yep. How do I look, Doc? Well, I wouldn't advise lying down, Buster. Some careless undertaker might bury you. (laughs) Come to think of it... Oh, hi, Latrivia. Hello, Dr. Gamble. I have the tickets, McGee. Fine. Attention, please. Oh, here we go. Train number seven, the cinder bucket... Now loading at gate three for Omaha, Chicago, Kansas City, Omaha, Plantsmouth, and Omaha. Oh, boy, oh, boy, here we go. Did you buy all the tickets for the trip? I told you, yes. Okay, okay, just checking. Come on, boy, get aboard. I'd rather get a two-by-four, McGee, and beat your block off. <laughs> That's mighty nice of you to ask us all along on this trip, the trivia. <laughs> you get my vote again this year for mayor. I may not run this time, Doctor. I may just destroy myself. <laughs> I hope you didn't forget anything, dearie. How about the baggage? Oh, the baggage is okay. Checked it straight through myself. Well, good. I got in a real interesting conversation with the baggage man, too. I was telling him about the time I and Fred Nittany, the guy that him and me had a vaudeville act together from Star Rock, Illinois, and we played a split week between Omaha and Hackensack, see, New Jersey... And that was what... Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Yes. I checked all the baggage through the Hackensack. Oh, no. Oh, no. River and Molly return in the Roland. Every mother wants the best for her baby. And when it comes to choosing between one brand of milk and another, this you can count on. There's no better milk than pet evaporated milk. No other milk you can buy is easier for your baby to digest than pet milk. No other milk is safer than pet milk. And no other milk in the world can do more for your baby than pet milk can. You see, pet milk has a combination of milk minerals and vitamin D that a baby must have in order to make good steady growth and have strong straight bones and sound teeth. And every can of pet milk has the important seal of acceptance of the Foods and Nutrition Council of the American Medical Association. Not every milk merits that important seal. So if your baby is a bottle baby, you can be sure you're doing the right thing when you give him pet milk, the first evaporated milk, the first food for millions of happy, healthy babies. My, this is a lovely train, McGee. Yep. Hey, how do you spell Baron? Spell what? What are you doing? I'm sending a telegram. Let me read it to you. To Jack Pearl... Alias the Baron Munchausen. Oh, yes. It says, from all of us in Wistful Vista, our sincere thanks for carrying on this summer. Oh, the way he carries on, too. (laughs) Then I say, best of luck to you and Mimi Benzel and all your gang. Well, good. I'll sign that, dearie. Well, good night. Good night, all. The first evaporated milk, pet milk, brings you Fiddle McGee and Molly each week at this time. Next week's show will come to you from Exxon Coliseum in Omaha, Nebraska, where Fibber McGee and Molly lend a hand to the Red Feather Campaign of America. If you were asked to stay with someone who had tried to commit suicide, what would you do? How would you help? 
Well, those are questions young wife Sally Carter tries to answer as she sits through the night with a young neighbor in the story of the week on Pet Milk's Mary Lee Taylor program next Saturday morning. Together with this dramatic story, you'll hear a brand new way of how to stretch a pound of meat into a delicious new kind of meatloaf. It's the husband-tested recipe of the week for tasty pork loaf. And you'll hear how to make it on Pet Milk's Mary Lee Taylor program, a Saturday morning highlight on NBC. Steve Wilson combats crime in big towns. Tonight on NBC.